Hi guys, um, I just want to do a few slides on the importance of not-for-profit marketing. Um, in the textbooks, it's being paid very little attention. It's a page and a half. Considering the amount of money um, Australians donate and the services these organisations give, I think it needed far more respect. Uh, I've had particular interest in the area as a supervisor of a few of my colleagues who um, I'll show you some of the publications and stuff we've looked at at the end. But you, one of the things that we've seen, especially in recent times, bushfires and what have you, is the, the services delivered by these great organisations. Vision Australia has helped my son uh, for years. Uh, he's at university. They help people who are literally blind to minimal vision. Um, to people yeah, who, who are functional but just need support. And as a parent, I can assure you, having them on board um, pretty much from early diagnosis point has been a, a real game changer in terms of dealing with and providing opportunities. You've got the Cancer Council, which uh, we've done research with. Um, we did research with Alan Pomering and Heather Marciano on developing um, resources to get people to with intellectual disabilities to check themselves for um, skin cancer and spots. Um, that was a very interesting project uh, where you're dealing with some of the most vulnerable people in society. Um, and it was a parent organisation, was Green Acres, who's just literally three, four blocks away from here near the North Gong pub. Absolutely great organisation. So guys, um, let's have a look at a few definitions. We'll get through this quickly, but just to put the importance of this sector there and the opportunities for anyone who is trained in marketing and really doesn't want to go to the dark side of corporate marketing um, and wants to help the community. So what is a non-profit? Well, they don't make money. Um, they Any money they do make, they just pour straight back into the organisations. I was on the board of the Disability Trust uh, for a few years a while ago and these guys had respite homes um, they looked after vulnerable people they are just one of the best organizations margaret bones the ceo um, you've got matt there penny top managers i mean it was a privilege to work with such a caring organization and they provided work opportunities um, they're just great uh, if you want to have a look at a really good um, non-profit have a look at their website so again guys you look at it with the bushfires we donate to a lot of these things unicef the red cross these are this is literally the outcome of people who want change and want to help other people so again in australia you've got leukemia foundation nina field i think still involves one of our students was um, involved in helping um, heaps of people with leukemia in the Illawarra, um, running things like the World's Greatest Shave. I'm sure many of you have been there. At the moment, a lot of research funding's gone into cancer. Um, yeah, there are non-profits everywhere. They just don't get the prominence or get to the ear of millennials. And this is one of the problems. Um, yeah, more non-profits, the Salvation Army, those people don't realise it is actually a church-based um, charity who has one, is viewed as one of the most trusted brands and organisations in Australia, and they are an institution in the country. Um, so what, what's the story with MPOs? Guys, the non-profit sector in Australia has 700,000 charities, all trying to provide a service and benefit the community. Now, you look in terms of employment, 604,000 people. Now, they've been particularly impacted by the current circumstance of the coronavirus. It's hurting a lot of them, getting volunteers. But I know that any of you, if you want to show who you are to an employer, get involved with a non-profit, help volunteer contribute. A lot of the times, that's one of the key decisions. They want to know who you are as an individual and as a member of society. Now, you look at this, had an income of $33.5 billion. Um, so twice as large as the entire contribution to Tasmania. I'm pretty sure I updated this last year, so this is current. Now, again, non-profit, Fred Hollow's organisation, I mean, you know, 
getting people who are blind to see again. I mean, it's superb. The state emergency service, the RFS at the moment sitting on $50 million of donations. Uh, I think it's from Claire Barber trying to figure out if they can legally use them. Oxfam. Um, now, guys, one of the locals I've told you is Green Acres. Superb. Look, at providing employment for um, adults, um, teenagers with intellectual disabilities, absolute privilege working with them. Um, just fantastic. And, um, you yeah, know, you've got the Disability Trust I've very, already spoken about. Um, really doing a lot in service provision. Another one where my nephew was um, the Kids Wish Ambassador, now Southall, until he passed away. Um, these guys are doing s speech therapy. They do a Christmas party at the Entertainment Centre normally um, for all kids uh, with um, disabilities. Uh, it's a really great event, a great community organisation. Now, one of the interesting things I want to point out that where a lot of your marketing skills can come um, to the fore are through donations. Um, government gives some grants, but a lot of the times they have to fund their activities um, and generate their own income to provide services. So it's very interesting. Um, one of the papers I'm probably most proud of is our most recent one, which was um, describing a model of giving um, for what's the donation behaviour of millennials and different generations. My PhD student, who's now a, a lecturer at uh, Notre Dame, has a sucker giver. It was his baby. And uh, it showed how do people behave when they donate, what happens when they get asked too much. So uh, it's really interesting. How do we get people to give? How's the money used? And with a couple of the the massive disasters going on in Australia at the moment, seeing where we put our money and how it's generated has been most interesting. So again, you can donate in terms of goods, free stuff, uh, a heap of reasons. Now, types of donation, as we know, blood, organ, different types. All I wanted to do was highlight to you that there really is an opportunity to do internships, try your marketing skills. My um, third year students have um, in the past, would we'll do marketing plans for these charities to help them um, promote their activities, create awareness. Um, in terms of the research I've been involved with, you could see that the paper is poisoning the well, a donation request fatigue model. This only came out this year. Uh, Dr. Paul Chad's an expert on um, market orientation. How do you get charities to use more marketing-based approaches to communicate with stakeholders, uh, communicate the value proposition, increase donation behaviour. You can see the journal, Non-Profit and Public Sector Marketing. Um, we also published the, the, the theoretical framework for doing this. Now, my other PhD student, Dr. John Cantrell, was why companies give. Um, there are opportunities to get involved on the corporate side and uh, manage the donations and the corporate reputation. So these are just some of the areas you can go in. I thought that um, this, this area deserved just a bit more respect than the textbook gave it. Um, and it is a very fulfilling area to have a career in. So guys, I just thought I'd give you a quick wrap up. Um, yeah, not for profit, um, doing fantastic things for the world and the Australian community.